does have a very nice district. I can, as chair, attest to that. Um, we'll now recognize Mr. Katko for five minutes. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, mean, I just want to correct the record and say that Syracuse, New York is paradise on earth, not, not Mr. Salud's district. But uh, Mr. Buttigieg, uh, I want to thank you very much for being here today. And it's good to see you again. The last time I saw you, uh, I think we were in the White House a year ago in the Oval Office in February, speaking about infrastructure with a small group of individuals, with the president and vice president there as well. And uh, lots happened since then. And I'm thrilled to say that I was the very first Republican to cast my vote in favor of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. Um, it's a culmination of many years of work on my part and others. And uh, it started back in 2017 with the Problem Solvers Caucus. I chaired the subcommittee that issued an infrastructure report. We updated it in 21. We presented it to a, a group of governors, senators, members of Congress, and it caught fire and went from there. So I'm thrilled that we finally got it across the finish line. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be able to talk to you about it here today. And Central New York, as you know, is going to be a major beneficiary of this act because of the Interstate 81 rebuild that's going to be going through the heart of the city. And uh, that money is sorely needed there and elsewhere across this country. Providing stable and dependable, dependable federal funding for infrastructure was one of the reasons I came to Congress. And I was proud to do my part to make that a reality by supporting this, this, this infrastructure bill. In addition to providing billions of dollars for a wide range of other physical infrastructure priorities, New York State is seeing a significant increase in its apportionment of federal highway aid under this law, which is welcome news. From major highway projects to addressing wear and tear on rural roads, this funding makes a huge difference top to bottom across our state. And unfortunately, along with many of my con constituents, I'm concerned about how far this money is going to go in the near future due to the dramatic rise in inflation. I want to note that the infrastructure bill is not the problem here. And it, 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 it's not the inflation driver. In fact, there's not an expert who says it is. In fact, according to experts from the American Enterprise Institute, the infrastructure bill actually eases inflationary pressures in the long run because of its focus on improving productivity over the next decade. However, as we all know, this was not the only bill Congress passed last year. And we now find ourselves at a point where inflation reached a 40-year high of 9.1% last month, which is the most I've seen since I was a young man in the Carter administration and the Carter administration was in power. Inflation has impacted prices in every sector, but of specific interest to our conversation today is the prices of construction materials and fuel, which are both through the roof. As states and localities try to budget for in-demand road and bridge projects, sustained inflation is going to make it even more difficult to stretch these critical infrastructure dollars to cover the projects that Congress intends them to. As a result, we end up facing the exact same dependability challenges this bill was supposed to address. So I have a couple of quick questions for you. Uh, and, and if you could help me with them, I'd appreciate it. Um, first of all, what steps are the department uh, taking to ensure that pur the purchasing power of the Infrastructure Act uh, is, uh, is remains intact? And, and second of all, you can take in these in either order you like. Um, can I assume that the Department of Transportation is focusing your efforts on permitting reforms to the Infrastructure Act to help reduce the baked in costs and delays for these projects. And with that, I yield back. Well, uh, uh, thank you, and, and let me recognize uh, uh, your support and leadership when it came to uh, this infrastructure law coming together and, and strongly agree with you and, and with the economists who have indicated that uh, uh, seeing it through is going to ease inflationary pressure. Uh, for that reason, we feel a great sense of urgency about making sure that we uh, effectively uh, use these, these taxpayer dollars. And there's no question that the increased cost of input to building infrastructure uh, represents a, a challenge for us in implementation. Uh, this is true whether we're talking about supply chain constraints contributing to, uh, uh, to raw material costs or whether we're talking about uh, workforce shortages impacting labor costs. Uh, so several things that we are able to do, and uh, uh, one thing I would point to is the collaboration that we have with project sponsors uh, to share best practices from what we've seen around the country and even around the world on how to effectively keep those costs under control, uh, use technical assistance to, to provide that kind of support, uh, and of course continue working the, the root causes of the issue through efforts like the uh, Supply Chain Disruptions Task Force. We also see certain flexibilities that do exist within the legislative framework, and, and when they are there, we will pursue them in order to make sure project sponsors succeed, uh, but are, are, of course, always open to working with Congress on other measures that we can take 
uh, to make sure that uh, we really get that value, that $1.2 trillion worth of economic and, uh, and other benefit to the American people uh, for the taxpayer investment that's being made here. Good, thank you very much, I yield back. Thank you so much, I'll recognize myself now. Um, let me start, Mr. Secretary, setting a couple of, a couple of things straight. Uh, I'm sure you'll agree with me that every American should have the freedom to buy whatever kind of car they want. Agreed. But when more people buy EV, 